Hello, you have reached this the Department of Public recorded. Safety stay-at-home hotline. The information you leave is considered public information. At the tone, please leave the following information. Your name, your callback number, how the stay-at-home order is being violated, and where the stay-at-home order was violated. Thank you. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, yeah. hang up or press pound for more options. Hey, you know what, Tim Tim Walls, you should you should absolutely run for vice president cuz you know, we love this kind of snitch on your neighbor thing. That is audio that was put together by the state of uh Minnesota by Tim Walls who said, "You have to tell us if somebody is breaking any of the rules. You have to tell us and then we'll take care of it." That is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Now you look at what is happening. They are encouraging you to snitch on a neighbor, but at the same time, they are taking any whistleblower and destroying them. There was a breaking story that happened yesterday. Several federal air marshal whistleblowers came forward with information that the former congresswoman, Tulsi Gabbard, presidential candidate, Tulsi Gabbard, is now enrolled in the Quiet Skies program. Now, it's described as a TSA surveillance program with its own compartmentalized suspected terrorist watch list. The hell does that mean? Um, They are coming after the whistleblowers, and Tulsi is with us now. Tulsi. Tulsi, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Okay, yes, I can hear you. I just got the uh, statement from the TSA. You tell me what this means. TSA uses multi-layer security processes to protect the nation's transportation systems to ensure freedom of movement for people in commerce. Uh, TSA's Quiet Skies program uses a risk-based approach to identify passengers and apply enhanced security measures on some domestic and outborn international flights. To safeguard sensitive national security measures, TSA does not confirm nor deny whether any individual has uh, matched to a risk-based rule. These rules are applied to a limited number of travelers for a limited period of time. Simply matching to a risk-based rule does not constitute derogatory information about the individual. That's the response that we get when we say, was Tulsi Gabbard on this, as the whistleblowers have said, and what are you doing about it? How do you respond to that? Uh, this makes no sense. It makes no sense. And worse than that, it exposes, it exposes so much about what is broken uh, in, our, in our government. You know, it, when, you, when, I, when you listen to that, and, and I've, I've read the words and I've heard it said a few times, a risk, risk-based approach. So Mm -hmm. I am someone who, like a lot of Americans, uh, enlisted because of 9-11. I've served in the Army now for over 21 years, uh, enlisted because of 9-11 to go after the Islamist terrorists who attacked us on that day and who continue to pose a threat to us today. Um, I've deployed to three different war zones over these last 21 years, most recently in Africa uh, with special forces focused on working with the Somali government to uh, defeat the Islamist terrorist groups, the Al-Qaeda-affiliated Al-Shabaab group there, uh, deployed to Iraq in 2005 during the height of the war, and to now be in a place where my own government, under this administration, the Biden-Harris administration, is now using the TSA, using air marshals, using TSA K-9 teams, uh, using both plain clothes and uniformed agents to surveil me in my movements because they deem me as a risk and a potential domestic terrorist. It is, it is to, to say that this is hurtful, Glenn, is, is, beyond, is, is beyond the pale. That, that doesn't even begin to describe no. how this makes me no. feel. And I also know that I am not, I am certainly not the only veteran or service member who they have chosen to put on this list because this administration has said as recently as last year in 2023, but also shortly after they came into power, that they deem those who serve in the military 
as uh, likely to be domestic extremists and terrorists. Jeez. So, um, Tulsi, do you, th- do you think it is your... It is insane. Do you, th- do you think it's your service or the fact that, I mean, Hillary Clinton called you a Russian asset? I mean, she was... I believe she was uh, Secretary of State when she was saying that. That you are a Russian asset... So, so I, I can't, I can't begin to to place any kind of logic or rationale in their insane, tyrannical thinking, uh, and what is driving their actions. Other than what we've already seen proof of over these last four years is they will weaponize any levers of power they have within the government to go after those who they deem to be a threat to their power, who they deem to be a political opponent. They see those of us who who rightly criticize our government and their corruption and their abuse of power as a domestic threat. They say so publicly. They say, hey, those who criticize public institutions may be domestic extremists or terrorists. So this this goes against the the, the core of our First Amendment, right, uh, which our founders intentionally put in place to ensure our protected speech. Whether we be praising the government or we be criticizing our government, that is that is core to the founding of who we are as a country. And so not only uh, the, the only assumption that I can make is that they are coming after me because of my speaking the truth in revealing who they really are. And again, this is these are these are some of the most powerful people in the Democrat Party, a party that I was part of for you know almost uh, almost 20 years. Um, I, I cannot I cannot think of any other reason for them to be targeting not only me, uh, but my husband. And, and also just it's important to note that while we have been going through this and are, are, are going through this, the reality that I now face and that we now face is this constant stress of, of knowing that uh, that I am being surveilled by my government and wondering if and how they are doing that. How are they monitoring my movement? Are they listening to my phone calls? Are they reading my emails and text messages forever from here on out, looking over my shoulder constantly? And, and there, there is no way to live free when, uh, when I know that my government may be surveilling me uh, and, and not not and knowing that they have no hesitation in weaponizing whatever they can get their hands on uh, to go after someone they deem a threat. It, it, it reminds me of the Stalin, the Stalin approach of, you know, uh, yes. what is it? Find, find me the man I'll and show, I'll show you the crime. I'll show you the crime. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Um, uh, and especially that it's happening to you, uh, well-known person, former um, candidate for president. You were a uh, Congress, uh, Congresswoman. You, you also are still serving in the National Guard. For them to target you um, is, is really, truly remarkable, because what do you think they'll do uh, to the average person? And anybody who ever said, I don't care if they're surveilling or listening or whatever, because I'm not doing anything wrong. Really, let me just play again. Um, this is the, this is the guy who is now in charge of the digital for Harris, um, and this is him in 2020 saying what they did to flag misinformation and change people's minds. Cut six. We brought Becca on to sort of think through. Okay, now that we have these misinformation narratives, what do we actually do? Um, <laughs> like. Uh, uh, it is it is one thing to know that um, there is a lot of conversation online about corruption or or you know mental fitness or or any of these things um, or or um, you know the vice president's record on the crime bill um, which you know was sort of a controversial uh, piece of legislation in, in the early nineties um, but it was it was another to go okay now, now what. So what they did was they targeted you, the individual. If you ever talked about the crime bill, which is not in misinformation, as he said, it's controversial, but it's not misinformation. The president's fitness to serve, that's not misinformation. You were lying to us for four years. Uh, and what, what, what was the other one? Uh, um, 
I don't remember the other one. But all three of those are true, and they targeted you as the individual. Now, take that one step further. If you don't change your mind, don't they Tulsi Gabber you? Don't they Tulsi Gabbard you? I mean, I hate to make you into a verb, uh, but you might turn into that, Tulsi. Hopefully not. This is exactly this is exactly why they do this uh, because of the chilling effect that it has. Um, you know, you, you, the, when you look at that clip, they're talking about misinformation or disinformation. Obviously, as you pointed out, those things were actually true. But let's let's say it was misinformation or disinformation. That is protected speech under the First Amendment. That is protected yes. speech and should not and must not be grounds for our government to try to censor or silence us or frankly to surveil what we are doing and where we are going. Uh, you know, they, they are unwilling to reveal the factors that they deem to be a risk. I still, obviously this is now, uh, the whistleblowers have leaked this. It is public information. I have seen with my own eyes the proof that, that I am on the quiet skies list. It's not just one person's word. Um, and, and yet uh, no, no one from, from uh, the federal government has, you know, from the Biden-Harris administration has reached out to me and to say, hey, anything. Hey, we made a mistake or, hey, here's the risk or, hey, here's the concern or nothing. Zero. Uh, it, it, I, uh... th- th- this cuts to the core of our First Amendment right to free speech, including our right to criticize our own government and our Fourth Amendment right to privacy. Uh, both of those are what is at the core of the unconstitutional nature of what they what they are doing to me. And by the way, my husband is also uh, mm-hmm. has been experiencing and subjected to the same thing for what he, he's not involved with politics. He's not he's not engaging in any kind of, uh, uh, you know, not that it would matter, but any kind of political protest. He's a filmmaker. Um, it's not just about me. And I think this is the point. No American deserves to live in fear of our own government, whether it's surveillance or retaliation, if you say something or do something that they don't like. Uh, and, and this is why they have to be stopped, because we cannot live in a free, we cannot live free and in a free society if we are constantly being monitored by our own government in the same way an inmate in prison is monitored by the prison wardens and guards. Yeah, the Opticon, uh, where you're constantly monitored and watched, was actually deemed cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, but uh, like that matters today. Um, Tulsi, thank you very much. I, I tell you, I have a, I have, you know, they're targeting Donald Trump to teach people like me and others, sit down, shut up, you're on the other side, we'll do anything to you. Um, it only makes me want to fight more. I think that there's a possibility that you were targeted because you're a Democrat or were a Democrat and you spoke out about what was going on in your own house. And, uh, you know, I think there's Democrats all over that would like to stand up. But, you know, are you going to are you going to get the same treatment that Tulsi got? Or is it worth it? The answer is yes, by the yeah. way. But just another the theory. The answer is um, yes, th- but, the fact that, that, but the fact that... that it will have the chilling effect that they are seeking because, you know, I mean, I, I'm questioning what, what are the things that I may say or the things that I may do or the, the, the truths that I expose, how much will my family have to suffer as a result of that? What is the cost and the price that those around me will have to pay for this? Uh, it, it is a very, it is, has a very real effect uh, on us directly uh, as we are now, you know, we, we, we've known about the weaponization of our of our government against political opponents. Mm-hmm. We've seen it happening to Donald Trump. Uh, now I'm experiencing mm-hmm. it directly. And others who may not be experiencing it directly are listening to our conversation now. And, and having that second thought of self-censorship, which is exactly the result that they're looking for. And we can't, we, we, they, they must be stopped. That's the bottom line. They must be stopped. So- Tulsi, thank you so much. Thank you.